What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to talk about 18650s because these are my favorite favorite type of battery. They are, well depending on which kind you get, between 3.6 and 2.7 nominal voltage and have a capacity anywhere from 1000 to 3000 milliamp hours. So, why am I talking about 18650s? Well, I like building things with these and I think the most interesting thing I've built so far is a battery pack. And what I did with this battery pack is I made an electric bike out of it. The my inspiration behind this is if you guys I don't know if, if you guys have heard of channel Renoa Super Genius, he made his own battery pack out of used laptop cells. This inspired me, literally gave me the inspiration to go out and try this myself. So I went down to my local laptop shop and I said, Hey, I need whatever dead packs you got and the guy's like, Okay, we have some in the back. I'm gonna give them to you for a dollar a pack. So I left the store with a box full of batteries and in total I got myself 240-ish of these cells for about 50 bucks. You cannot beat that with a 10-foot stick. So, what do you want to know about these? Well, they come in all different brands and capacities. For example, this is a pretty high quality, as you can see, made in Japan. I believe Panasonic. So, a really high quality cell. You can get these. You can get these Sanyos. You can get, I believe these are Sanyos as well. They have Sony's, they have all kinds. Actually, if you look in this pack right here, these purple ones are Sony. Yeah, so these are pretty good batteries. Now, the thing about a dead laptop, when they say the, the, the pack itself, when you have these in a pack, they'll be arranged, you know, they'll wire it up to power the laptop. They say that they're dead, but what happens is the battery management system on the laptop, for some reason or another, cannot charge one of the, you know, X amount of cells it's going to throw a bad code. So really when you get a bad laptop battery, it might only have one or two bad cells in it and generally you're going to get, the majority of them are going to be okay. So if you're like myself, I wanted to build an electric bike battery. So first thing I did, I got my batteries. Okay, then you got to figure out what configuration you want to run. So for me, I wanted to get the most power I could but at the same time keep the footprint small. So what I did is I taped them up in groups of 10. So if you count, we have you know, 10 18650s and these are going to be wired in parallel. So you're going to go parallel, 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 and then you're going to jump these to make a series. So what you would end up with is a three cells, so one, two, three groups of cells, and then you have ten pieces per, per group. So you have a ten piece by three cell battery pack. And this will give you anywhere between, you know, worst case scenario, ten amp hours, all the way up to best case scenario, you know, twenty, twenty-five amp hours. So I'm going to, I'm going to guess that my, some of my best packs Here's one that I've already completed. This one, I haven't capacity tested yet, but if I had to give it, give it a ballpark, I'm going to be really conservative and say about 20 to 22 amp hours. So you see I've labeled it 3S10P, that's the uh, configuration. Now to actually make the battery pack, you start off with one cell, you know, get however many cells, you got to figure out first how much capacity do you want and how big of a load are you going to pull. Now my electric bike doesn't pull more than, you know, 15 amps because it's a really low power setup. It's only a 700 watt setup, so it's a direct drive brushless hub motor. So if anybody, if you're familiar with electric bike technology, you know that's a pretty efficient setup, and it's not going to pull too much power compared to a geared hub motor or, you know, maybe a a bottom bracket mount hub uh, electric bike design. So I'm using direct drive motor. It only pulls about 15, 20 amps. So after you figure out your load, you got to figure out what the specifications are of your cells. Now. Since laptops come in all different shapes and sizes, they're going to have all kinds of different cells in them. So for me, the best thing to do was I just kind of went with a general, you know, discharge range. Like I said, I said 15 amps, so I just went with a 10-piece pack. You can get away with using a lot less than 10 cells. However, if you run, let's say, four cells, and these, these cells aren't rated for the load you're pulling, these are going to get hot, and if, in the worst case scenario, you're going to, you're going to ruin one. So the, my best thing is to either you know go overkill with these, especially since these are used cells. Um, I don't know the age of some of them. Now you can look up data sheets for these. So for example, this one has a number on it, uh, X L E L Y seven, and then it's got a bunch of numbers. Now if I put this into Google, it would pull up the data sheet for this battery. Not all of them are going to have that because sometimes they use Chinese cells, and it's hard to find a data sheet for the Chinese cells. But however, like. A good example is if you put this into Google right now, it would pull up that this is a Panasonic cell, and it would tell you its operating range, its fully charged range, and its current its current limit. And most of these aren't really rated for that much current. So if you're going to build a electrical bicycle battery pack out of 18650s, you really need to design the pack to be overkill 
you know, of what you're actually going to use it for. So I went with a 10 piece, 10 uh, cell configuration for each group, and I wire these in, th in, uh, in three cell packs. So I have this is an unfinished one. It takes I literally what I do. I probably do it the worst way is I solder on each individual cell after I clean the cells off of all the wrapping. And yes, this is very, very, very time consuming con compared to spot welding, but I've already made all my packs. I have six of these total made, This, not including this one. I have six of these total that are actually made because on my electric bike, I run, the, I run my electric bike on 12, either 9S or 12S configuration because the, it was originally made to be ran on 36 volts. And on 9S, you're right around there, but when you put a load on it, the voltage is going to dip down to about 33. So when you're on 12S, you're right in the sweet spot. In fact, you're a little above it, and your your bike really has great performance. I get I can easily do 20 miles an hour for you know 15, 20 mile stretches, no problem with this battery. So I have six of these that I run on a on a pretty continuous basis, and I've already put about 120 miles on this specific pack, and so far no issues. I I charge them to four point 10 volts, 4.10 volts per cell. You can go to 4.2, but you know with these older cells, I generally don't want to stress them because when you when you don't cycle these as greatly, like from from you know 3.5 all the up to 4.2 and down to 3.5, when you do that, you're putting a lot of stress, especially on these older cells. So the best thing to do is cycle them as little as possible. So start off with those little as high as voltages you want to go, and don't drain them all the way down. So I might do a five or 10 mile ride. And I'll come back and throw them on the balance charger and get them back up. Now that's another that's another thing you want to consider is balance charging. You can get away with just hooking these up, you know, to a power supply and putting a set amount of voltage on your positive and negative terminals of your battery pack, and it's going to charge the pack. However, it's very easy, especially for these cells that don't match each other, because almost none of these match. You know, they're not they're from the same battery pack, but they're all a bunch of different brands. It's very easy for them to get unbalanced. So from my RC experience you know, dealing with lithium polymer battery packs, it's best to have a balance lead. And the way I put a balance lead is you get you can get these balance extenders off eBay and you just cut the end off and you're left with the mail in that'll plug into your charger. And this you can wire onto the pack. If you want a lot more detail on actually how to build one of these, I'm I'm not really going into much detail. You need to check out Renault's Super Genius's channel. You can Google you can uh, look up his channel on YouTube, but he has a very, very comprehensive video on how he made his pack. And the construction of my pack is extremely similar to what he did. I just kind of wanted to give a brief overview of, you know, what cells I used, where I got them from, and my use for them. And like I said, you cannot be using old laptop batteries. I would highly suggest before buying a lot of these on eBay, because you can buy these in a lot on eBay, you know, 10 packs for 100 bucks or whatever. But go check your local computer repair shop, because a lot of the times they have battery packs in the back that they, that they can't sell because... If they hook it up to a computer, it throws a, it throws a code saying, "Oh, the battery pack's no good." So generally, you can get them for close to scrap prices. But like I said, if you're willing to take the time to carefully, that's another thing. It's it's kind of a pain to get them open. But once you get them open and you get the cells separated and you clean up all the crap off the terminals, you can end up with a bunch of good batteries. And I've out of all the packs I've scrapped, I maybe came across less than ten dead cells. And when I say dead, I mean they start out at zero. You put a charge on them. And you know you try to charge them to 4.1, but they just either don't take a charge or they get hot. And if a cell's getting hot when you're trying to charge it, that's a, that's a indication that it's turning that energy into heat, and it's not wanting to charge the cell. So there you go. That's my brief explanation about my battery pack. And like I said, it's worked out great for me. Um, Renault Super Genius was my inspiration, and I thought maybe I'd make this video. I'm still learning. You know, I'm trying to get the whole video thing going, but I'm wanting to make my channel a little bit better. So. You know, if you're into that kind of stuff, if you want to see my maybe my electric bike set up, and uh, you know, if you have any questions, or you want maybe you want to build your own electric bike and you want to know, you know, how to do it or whatever, uh, definitely let me know. I, I like helping people out. So if there's any YouTubers out there, you guys want some help? Hey, pe private message me and I'll help you out as to the best of my ability. But also, there's a labyrinth of internet of of information on the internet about this kind of stuff too. But like I said, this is my battery pack. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. I hope you got something out of it. If so, great. If not, well, hey. Thanks for your time. Anyways, thank you, YouTube.